Hey everybody, Charles from HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking about in-tank fuel pumps. So like I said, we were talking about the electric pumps that live inside the fuel tank on almost all Volkswagen models. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of really great DIY videos. So check them out at shopdap.com. Like always, before we tear into this fuel pump, we need to talk about what a fuel pump really is. Well, I love when parts are called what they do. It's a pump that pumps fuel. It takes the fuel from your tank and pushes it up to the engine. This pump here is actually submerged in fuel. So how does it work? Well, fuel is pulled up from the bottom of the tank, up through a filter, into the bottom of the pump, then driven out of the pump to its final destination. And that might either be a fuel filter or to the engine itself. Now, if this is a Torag or a Tiguan or a four motion vehicle, there's more going on to this. Generally, they have either two pumps or a delivery unit and a pump because they have saddle tanks that are split down the middle. So fuel has to go from one side to the other before it can go up into the engine. All right, let's take this bad boy apart and see what's going on on the inside. As you can see, this pump is not really meant to be serviceable. I got it apart as far as I could without actually having to take a cutting tool and cut it open. Another thing about most Volkswagen fuel pumps, they have the fuel level sender either attached to them or built into them. This one was built in and basically the cluster looks for a resistance value back from the level sender based on how much fuel is in here. This little piece is the float and as the fuel level rises, the float rises. How do we know we might have a bad fuel pump? Well, maybe your car doesn't start, or maybe it takes a really long time to start. Maybe it doesn't start when it's hot. Maybe it doesn't start when it's cold. Maybe it shuts off while you're driving, or maybe it's just simply running bad. Not having a good fuel pump can cause a whole range of things, but really the most common one that I've seen anyway is your vehicle doesn't start. Now, if it has a vehicle that has a high pressure fuel pump, the high pressure pump may be pulling enough fuel to let the car start, it'll just run really poorly. So if we think we have a bad fuel pump, how might we diagnose that? Well, we need to do our basic checks, make sure we have power and ground at our pump when we're supposed to. We can pull the line off at the engine and see if we have any fuel flow to the engine. We can use something like a power probe to power the pump and see if it comes on. Generally, if you have a failed fuel pump and it's seized up on the inside, the pump won't come on and it may blow the circuit breaker or fuse on your power probe. On the more modern stuff, we may need to output test the fuel pump. The newer stuff is pulse width modulated, which means the pump's actually turned on and off really fast by the ECM. 
and we can do a fuel pressure check. If you're doing a fuel pressure check, make sure that you're doing it the proper way. Some cars you just crank and measure how much fuel you have. Again, some you need to output test and actually force the pump on to see what your fuel pressure is. So you're gonna wanna follow the repair manual when you're checking fuel pressure. Is a fuel pump on a Volkswagen a DIY? Actually, replacing these isn't that hard. And this is one of those things that, uh, you know, it's really easy on a Volkswagen compared to some other vehicles. On a lot of cars, you have to drop the fuel tank down to gain access to the pump. For the most part, these are all under the back seat or in the luggage compartment. Now, on some Volkswagens, you may need a special tool to lock the pump into place. A lot of times you can do it by hand, but my Passat, for example, it locks into the bottom of the fuel tank, and there is a special tool in order to lock that in. Some of the other trouble you may run into is going to be fuel level. If your tank is full and you need to replace the pump, it's a lot harder to do than if the, uh, if the tank is empty. So keep fuel level in mind. Also, like I mentioned before, on the Touareg, the Tiguan, and other four motion vehicles, there's lines that run throughout the tank that connect this pump to what would be another pump over here. That can get really tricky, especially with a high level of fuel. The Touareg has like eight lines that run through the fuel tank that connect the two pumps together. So before you take on this job, see what kind of fuel pump it is. Is it just a unit like this one used to be? Or is it one that has all kinds of extra parts to it? That may dictate whether or not it is a really easy DIY or one that's a little bit trickier. And unlike most part failures, there's actually a lot you can do to prevent this failure. Things like not running your car out of gas or really low on gas all the time can actually prolong the life of your fuel pump. Fuel can also help cool this pump, so running it low or out of fuel can definitely shorten the life of your fuel pump. As of right now, we're actually seeing a common failure of fuel pumps on Tiguans, and that usually involves replacing both the suction pump and the electric fuel pump as well. Uh, Volkswagen had a recall years ago on the B5.5 Passats where we were replacing the fuel pumps. And I've replaced my fair share of pumps on Touregs and basically everything across the board in the Volkswagen line. It's not the most common repair, but it's common enough that when a car doesn't start and it sounds like it should, usually the fuel pump is the first place that I go. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Oh, beer of the day. Uh, Foothills month IPA of the month. It's the uh, the one that's Will, got Will Wheaton's dogs on it. So awesome, awesome, awesome IPA and uh, super adorable puppies on the, uh, on the beer list.